We will call to order the Board of Election Commissioners of the City of Chicago constituting ex officio the election board to hear and pass upon objections to nomination papers of candidates for the office offices of mayor, city clerk, city treasurer, and alderman in the city of Chicago. Good morning, my name is Marisol Hernandez. And to my right is Commissioner William Cressy. To my left is Commissioner Jonathan Swain. Uh, we have no motions. Uh, we do have two Rule 20 uh, motions. And the first one is 19 EBMUN-022. There is a related case, 19 EBMUN-023, Hector Escarzaga versus Anna M. Valencia, City Clerk, City of Chicago. Is Mr. Escarzaga here? Okay, we will pass it briefly and um, see if Mr. Escarzaga will, will come. Next case is 19 EB MUN 026, Sean Kawari versus Melissa Conyers Urban. Uh, 19 EB MUN 026, City Treasurer, City of Chicago. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair. Yes, please, uh, please identify yourselves for the record. Uh, Pericles Abasi, first name P-E-R-I-C-L-E-S, last name A-B-B-A-S-I. Uh, on behalf of the objector and the, the movement in this Rule 20 motion, uh, Sean uh, Corey, C-O-A-R-I. Okay. Good morning, members of the board. James P. Nally, N-A-L-L-Y. On behalf of the candidate respondent, Melissa Conyers Order. C O N Y E A R S. Okay. So uh, let's just uh, go to uh, the objectors. Uh, Rule 20 uh, request, Mr. Abbasi. Yes. Um, so in the candidate's uh, petition sheets, um, she submitted about, I think, 2973 signature pages with about 42,000 signatures. Uh, throughout those petitions, um, there are 3,706 signature lines that have, where the address that the voter wrote was crossed out and another address was written on top. Uh, presumably, the address on top is an address where that person is registered, but the address that was the voter wrote might have been where they resided, but not where they're registered. Uh, that occurred on 1,664 sheets, which is 56% of the sheets submitted. And I think there are 213 circulators um, whose, whose sheets were, were modified in this fashion. Um, now, re in, the, in the primary, in the March primary, uh, the Cook County Electoral Board, in the case of um, Featherston versus Kowalski McDonald, which um, was affirmed by the circuit court and, and the appellate court in, in an uh, unpublished opinion, uh, the Cook County Electro Officers Electoral Board said, never before has the board had a case involving a candidate's petition that bears hundreds and hundreds of alterations on the petition sheets themselves. 753 addresses on 378 sheets. Uh, and in that case, Ms. Kowalski McDonald had about 20,500 signatures. This is about twice the signatures, but five times the, um, the malfeasance, in, in, in my opinion. Uh, the, the issue with this is that um, when a circulator signs a petition sheet or signs the, the affidavit on the petition sheet before a notary, um, they uh, they um, uh, certify that the address, the, the resident's addresses, are correctly stated. Uh, if if it's been modified since after the circulator after the circulator signed it, you can't trust the circulator affidavit on that sheet, and um, that sheet, at the least, that sheet would have to be thrown out. In the Kowalski McDonald case. Um, where, where it was shown that one circulator did sign it, um, and then it was, when he signed it, the addresses weren't corrected. The electoral board found that the appropriate remedy was to throw out that sheet, and for other signatures, they threw out that line. Um, now, the question of, in this case, what we're, I'm, I am asking the board to take another step, which is that I'm arguing that this is such a prevalent practice. It happened through a majority, on the majority of the sheets, um, over two, 213 circulators, so it, I, I'm, it seems like it would have to have been done after 
it's, these sheets have been signed and notarized. And we would find that out through subpoenas and, and um, uh, you know, having witnesses testify, is that since it's done on such a large scale, it's something that, um, it's a fraud so pervasive throughout the petition sheets that the whole, um, the whole thing would have to be thrown out for, for not being in conformity with, with the election code. And, and granted, that is something, I'm asking the board to, to take a step that hasn't been taken before by, it, by, it, by it, this electoral board or by the appellate board, but it's something that hasn't been um, ruled out either. Uh, in, in the other pattern of fraud cases, such as Canis um, Husky, or Canner Fortis Husky, um, all those cases, a sheet was thrown out or a circulator was thrown out, it, it put them under the signature number. The same thing with Kowalski McDonald. Same thing with Cunningham v. Shafelin. Uh, the, the case that you know, the, can, the candidate is relying on is uh, Mitchell, um, where, where in that case, it was uh, one, of the, one of the candidates on a multi-candidate petition um, was found to have committed fraud as a circulator. The objectors in that case wanted to throw, kick that candidate off the ballot because of that. The appellate court said no. But in, in the opinion, uh, the appellate court said, um, in Mitchell, while the record demonstrates a pattern of irregularities related directly to McGrath and Browning, no such pattern was shown to the entire universe of the nominating petitions. I believe that holds out the possibility that if if something was to be shown to the entire universe of nominating petitions, um, then perhaps then throwing out the entire candidacy would be a remedy. Um, and in this case, where over 56% of the sheets have been modified in this manner, um, I, I think, frankly, this case should be sent back to the hearing officer so that we can conduct evidentiary hearings to find out what exactly happened. And if this was a fraudulent operation conducted by the, the candidate or her campaign um, before sending it in, and then this might be a case where it is appropriate to find that there, there was, um, you know, there was fraud throughout the entire universe of nominating petitions, and it would be a case where it would be appropriate to throw out the entire candidacy. Um, you mentioned that 56 percent of the sheets were modified. Yes. How many circulators in total? Uh, you know, the, the circulators of those sheets. There are 213 circulators of those sheets. I don't know how many circulators the candidate had total, but I know on those sheets there were 213. And because I I had requested 213 subpoenas, which might be overkill, but it, I, I wanted to cover the bases of you know these are all the people. Who circulated at least one sheet where an address was crossed out? Um, Mr. Hamill? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> um, this is basically a math problem for the board, and it's not really a problem. Um, the candidate submitted 42,226 signatures. Uh, individual line by line objections total 7,154. So, uh, the candidate would still, if every line by line objection were, were ruled in favor of the objector, the candidate would have over 35,000, would have 35,072 signatures. The law in this area is very clear. Uh, the McDonald case last uh, spring that uh, council referred to, that's six weeks of my life I'll never have back. <laughs> I was the objector's uh, counsel on that. But I, I tell you that because it was a very long, drawn out, uh, tedious proceeding. But when all was said and done, the board uh, was very careful there to say that we are not invalidating entire sheets, we are not invalidating an entire candidacy, the law does not allow us to do that. In that case, uh, because of the line by line objections uh, that were shown in that particular case where addresses were altered in that case, the candidate ended up 320 signatures below the minimum number of signatures. So that was the basis of the ruling in McDonald. It was not a, a, a one size fits all, uh, we're just gonna throw everything out. And in fact, the appellate court has been very strong on that over the, since any of these cases have come out. Even going back to Husky and Cantor and Fortis, uh, they didn't, there, none of those cases threw out the entirety of the set of nomination papers of a candidate. Rather, there had to be shown individual irregularities that would be enough to remove the candidate based on uh, not having enough valid signatures on the petition sheets. 
So that's been the law since the 80s. The law hasn't changed. So are you saying that the law allows for the striking of petition sheets in these particular cases, individual entire sheets? <clears throat> it does not in these types of cases. In McDonald, it did not. What happened there was it was line by line objections that because of these irregularities, these particular irregularities, brought the candidate down below the total number of valid signatures. Here, the math doesn't work for that. There's 7,154 objections, including the ones regarding these line by line changes. So even if you, again, even if all those were in favor of the objector here, the candidate would have more than 35,000 signatures. The other bit of math, just to, to, to put it out there, would be <clears throat> that even if, um, even if what the objector is asking for here, any sheet where there was a, a change of an address, even one single line of sheet, even if all those sheets were stricken, the candidate would still end up with in excess of 15,000 signatures. That would be good. And uh, the, the Mitchell case is the controlling law. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, I agree in the sense that if if each sheet with um, uh, with one line crossed out was thrown out, and then all the remaining objections were sustained, uh, she would be over 12,500, yes. Right. Um, and the Mitchell case is a controlling law. It's a decision of our appellate court. And uh, Mitchell, uh, Mitchell was a rather egregious set of facts. There was a candidate who took a, a large number of petition sheets that were signed by the circulators, pre-signed by the circulators, met a notary in a tavern, and instructed the notary to notarize all those pre-signed signatures. So the circulators were never in the presence of the notary public, never swore their oath in the presence of the notary public. And the candidate herself uh, was, was an instrument of this process. And even there, the appellate court said, you know, bad conduct, bad candidate, but you know what? Um, as it says, in, in the absence of uh, evidence that the nomination papers were invalid due to the presence of a sufficient number of objections to warrant termination uh, of the candidacy. We discern no legal basis authorizing an electoral board to terminate a candidacy. And that's essentially what the objector is seeking to do here. Saying, you know what, we think that this is bad and there's enough of it that you know, the candidacy needs to be terminated. And even under the, the, the pretty Pretty bad set of facts in the Mitchell case for the candidate. Uh, the appellate court said, you know what? Boards aren't authorized to do that. The election code does not contemplate that. And uh, the appellate court said, because this candidate, despite her misconduct, still has enough valid signatures, she goes on the ballot. And she, in fact, did appear on the ballot. So the law does not favor the argument here uh, of the objector. And uh, the McDonald case does not favor the argument. The McDonald case was simply there were enough line-by-line -line objections to take the candidate below, including these irregularities with the addresses. Here the math is completely different. If, if every line-by-line -line is granted, the candidate has 35,000 signatures for an office that needs 12,500. And uh, even, if, even if you were to extend the argument to striking a sheet where a single address had been uh, changed, uh, the candidate would have an excess of 15,000 good signatures after that. And under the law, Husky, Cantor, uh, Mitchell, uh, that's the limit of the board's authority here, and what the objector is asking you to do is to exceed your legal authority, uh, which is not something that the board ought to do. So it would be our opinion that the, uh, the hearing officer wrote a very well-reasoned and detailed opinion, and uh, I think that for the reasons that he set forth in that opinion, uh, the board, in order to follow the law, has to agree that the motion to strike should have been granted as it was. Uh, Mr. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just say um, about the in the um, uh, Kowalski McDonald case, there was there were entire sheets stricken where um, it was one circulator, I believe his name was Kevin Hamilton, where um, he testified that when he signed the circulator affidavit, there were not addresses striked down in the sheet, uh, and the electoral board determined that uh, for that circulator in particular, since the evidence showed that. Um, when he signed, when he certified that the addresses were correctly stated forth, or correctly stated as set forth, and then if it was modified afterwards, and that <coughs> that circulator affidavit uh, can't be trusted. And you know, it, it's, just, let me just okay. stop you there for a minute. I don't know if Mr. Nelly. I would I would respectfully disagree. They struck that one sheet because 
they showed on that particular sheet that had occurred? Um, but assuming even if we had struck, we strike all of those sheets, the community would still be above. Right, it, 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 to be under, so the situation where it would be under would be to say, there's, they're basically that they're not, because of this rampant practice, the whole thing isn't in conformity with the election code. Or, or perhaps the hearing could, so, to do, you know, could bring out evidence that perhaps certain circulators as a whole have to be thrown out, perhaps. Um, but but it, it, that's, it, if, if uh, he is correct in that, if just if we struck every sheet with one strike on it, and then all the other signatures in the appendix recapitulation, she would be over 12,500, yes. Okay. I'm sorry, was there something on one wanted to say? Um, uh, yeah, I'll just, you know, I, I think, you know, Mitchell, the Mitchell opinion dealt with the facts of Mitchell, which was the candidate is a circulator. And, and I think that's well established that just because the candidate commits fraud as a circulator, you don't throw the whole thing out. But this is, I think, something beyond the candidate as a circulator. This is something that was done to the whole, the whole thing by your campaign, whether it was by the candidate or by someone else. Uh, it was done, it, it was basically the whole petition sheets, the whole set is defective for not because of this. Yeah. Yes. Um, any further questions? Um, no, uh, uh, again, I, I, I believe our hearing officer and did a very well reasoned, well established opinion, as far as I can see, did not abuse any discretion. Um, yes, uh, I think uh, Mr. Rossi made a good, very good argument, um, but I don't think um, it rises uh, to if there's su sufficient support out there for saying that the entire petition should be invalidated. It's clear from the record that uh, this candidate does have uh, even taking out uh, those uh, sheets and, and signatures, uh, questionable signatures, that the candidate has sufficient uh, 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 signatures to get on the ballot. And um, for that reason, um, I would entertain a motion to Deny the objector's subpoena request um, to strike uh, uh, deny the Rule 20 to strike the allegations in the objector's petition related to various circulator and memory issues. Um, and uh, the second on dual signing allegations. Um, Due to the lack of specificity in violation of 10 ILCS 5 slash 10 8, and to dismiss the remainder of the objector's petition for failing to state a claim for which the requested relief could be granted. Um, is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. This motion is granted. And let's see for a minute. Um, motion is granted, and um, it is therefore ordered that the objections of Shaman Kawari to the nominating petition, nominating nomination papers of Melissa Conyers, urban candidate for the office of city treasurer for the city of Chicago, are hereby overruled and said nomination papers are hereby declared valid and the name of Melissa Conyers, urban, shall be printed on the official ballot for the general municipal election. General Counsel. Gentlemen, the Commissioners are signing a final written decision here, uh, which would start the clock for judicial review pursuant to section 10 10.1 of the election code. Uh, would you both be willing to wait a few minutes so a photocopy can be made and presented to you? 
Yeah, we're fine. That works perfectly. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. second group of cases, and in each of these cases, uh, uh, the objections have been withdrawn. Um, it is, uh, they are number 10 on the agenda, Linda Stamps versus Eddie Johnson III, 19EB ALD-086, Linda Stamps versus Tony L. Oaks, 19EB ALD-090, and Shajan Kariakosi and Shantia Kimbrough versus Susanna A. Mendoza, 19EB, MUN-006. Um, and in each of these cases, the objections have been withdrawn. Um, is there a motion so um, to adopt the hearing officer's report and recommendation? So moved. Second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so uh, the motion passes, and um, uh, it is therefore ordered that the objections um, of each, uh, the obje objections for each of these cases um, are hereby withdrawn, and the candidates, respective candidates, um, uh, nomination papers are hereby declared valid and their names shall be printed on the official ballot for the general municipal election. Um, the next matter we will take is number 14 on the agenda, Henry Cervantes versus Martha Yerania Ranhill, 19EB ALD-118. 
Um, is there a motion to grant the objector's motion to withdraw his objector's petition and to dismiss his objections contained therein? Now, there is no uh, final decision yet as to whether the candidate's name will appear on the ballot due to a pending related case. This is simply a motion to, with, uh, to withdraw the objector's petition. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion granted and the objections are withdrawn and dismissed. Uh, now, uh, there are certain um, cases in which uh, we have uh, reviewed the record and uh, we found that the objections are overruled uh, and or dismissed and the candidates uh, names shall be on the ballot. Um, the cases are as follows. Anthony Harris versus Chris Talia Ferro, 19EB ALD-069. Um, there is a related case, ALD-070. And Burlestel Branch versus Chris Talia Ferro, 19EB ALD-070 with related alternate case of 069 from the 29th Ward. Um, is there a motion to dismiss uh, the objector's uh, petition um, for failing to state the objector's residence address in violation of Section 108 of the Election Code? Um, and to both of those cases. And that applies to both of those cases and finding that the candidate um, shall be on the ballot. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion is approved and it is therefore ordered that the, um, the name of uh, Chris Talia Farrell um, shall be uh, placed on the ballot for the general municipal election. Um, I will call one last time Hector Esparza versus Anna M. Valencia, 19 EB MUN-022 with a related case, MUN-023. Are any of the parties here? I hear no response. We will proceed. Hear no response. We will proceed with the, um, with the decision. Um, the Uh, is there a motion to adopt the hearing officer's report, which uh, overruled the objections? A question. Do we need to dismiss the original motion? One constitution vote? No. Just adopt the motion. I, I think we should. We should yeah. Include the motion just to deny it. Okay. Deny it. I would say strike for elected prosecution. Uh, I, I, I move to strike the Rule 20 motion in this case for lack of prosecution. Second. Okay, so there is a motion, amended motion, to strike the Rule 20 motion and to adopt the hearing officer's report and recommendation. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> passes and it is therefore ordered that the objections of Hector Esparzaga to the nomination papers of Ana Valencia in the day for the Office of City Clerk for the City of Chicago are hereby overruled 
and said nomination papers are hereby declared valid and the name of Anna Valencia shall be printed on the official ballot for the general municipal election. And I note it's now 10.05 a.m. Thank you. First one is number one on the agenda, Stephen Saltzman and Terry Beingold, 19 EB ALD-007. Uh, That's versus Myers. Oh. Versus Myers. Yes. Let me just go back to the agenda. Mm -hmm. that, that is a Stephen Saltzman and Terry Beingold versus Nathan Benjamin Myers. Thank you. Uh, the next one is a uh, group, um, which is five, six, and seven on the agenda. Rogelio Varela and Michael Pollock versus Myra Gonzalez, 19-EB-AOD-058. versus Mirko, quote, Limo Mike Z, Z Fladick Jr. That's number four on the agenda, and it is 19 EB ALD-054. Uh, the next one is 
Number 15 on the agenda, Kevin Bailey versus Matthew Johnson, 19EB ALD-143. Number 16 on the agenda, Juan Calderon versus Mirko Limo Mike Z, Z Quadic Jr., 19EB ALD-151. Number 17 on the agenda, Shajan Kosi. Harriet Mims and Shantia Kindle versus Conrad Pikes Clark, 1980 MUN-005. Number 19 on the agenda, Richard L. Barnett versus Conrad Pikes Clark, 1980 MUN-009. And number 20 on the agenda, Richard L. Barnett versus Richard Myers, 19EB, MUN-010. And in each of these cases, the hearing officer sustained the objections and found that the candidates, recommended that the candidates uh, should be off the ballot. Uh, we have reviewed the uh, reports and recommendations and uh, agree with the hearing officer's reports. Is there a motion to adopt the hearing officer's reports in each of these cases? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes and we have the uh, respective objections to the respective candidates uh, are sustained. Uh, and the said nomination papers of the respective candidates are hereby declared invalid and uh, the, the respective names shall not be printed on the official ballot for the general municipal election. That concludes, is that correct, Mr. Lasker, the, hear the final decisions for today? Correct. And now we will go back to the subpoena request. Um, and we have, Madam Chair, one of the first two cases are still pending subpoena requests. The last four on the agenda here uh, have become moot by the entry of the final decisions. Okay. So, uh, Six. Number four, number four on the agenda. We haven't received a number on the agenda that helps receive a recommendation from the hearing officer that we haven't visited the So we should take so all that matter? Yeah. Okay. Um, and number three, number three seeking a, a single subpoena to petition a, a, for a, a petition circulated for testimony regarding that person's legal residency. Okay. 
and they filed no opposition, and the hearing officer does recommend approval. Okay. Are there any questions? Is there a motion to approve? So is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, motion passes, and the uh, objectors request for a subpoena for subpoena for the individual need is approved. Uh, the next item is 19 EB ALD 127, Nathaniel Moore versus Jedediah Brown, Alderman for the 7th Ward of the City of Chicago. Uh, Mr. Lasker? The objector is seeking to subpoena six uh, petition circulators and six notaries to obtain testimony about whether those circulators were in the presence of the notaries when the petition sheets were signed. Uh, the candidate opposed the subpoena request as untimely filed, but the, you know, our electoral board staff puts a stamp on all the documents when they're emailed <coughs> in. All, all indications are it was emailed and received timely, and that's the hearing officer's finding. So the hearing officer further finds the subpoenas are relevant to issues raised in the objector's petition. He recommends granting. Are there any questions? If none, is there a motion to approve the subpoena request? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes and the subpoena is approved. So I think that concludes the electoral hearing at this moment. And uh, we are tentatively scheduled for uh, January 7th? Second. Second. Um, do we have a time? Yeah, we were thinking perhaps 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, we'll turn that up. And we'll get the notice posted. Okay. Prior to the new year. Okay. Thanks. We may take a moment just to sign these final decisions while the electoral board is still in session. Appreciate that. Did just vote to approve several uh, subpoenas in case number 127, ALD 127. There should be about 15 subpoena forms, but there's only two of them in the file. I would request a, a motion authorizing the general counsel to sign on the chairwoman's behalf and the parties provide the forms. Sure. Is there a motion? So Second. Second.
Are there any parties in the room to the cases that were just decided? Seeing none, let the record reflect. Yeah, one one. One. Yeah, one one. One. The request for subpoenas. Get yeah, that for our Was that 127 or 55? Yeah. <laughs> but I'll see you later today. <laughs> Sorry about that. That was why they didn't file. Trying to get people gets made. Um, is there a motion to recess uh, or um, uh, the fall of the chair? Um, so moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Mm -hmm. Aye.